the webinar series that we're doing for your designs. Um, the company's name is UR Designs, as in uh, meaning your designs. You get to set these things up and do them the way you like. Um, I'm activating my camera so you can kind of see who I am and what I was going on. It looks nice and blurry, which is really good. That helps my look as well. Um, my name is Eric Dobbins, and I am the CEO of Your Designs. And basically, uh, just wanted to have a uh, webinar today to discuss, are your customers becoming more and more demanding? Um, this is something that we've run into and we've had lots of questions about. So without too much more, um, I'm going to set some ground rules real fast, and then we'll jump right into the webinar. Um, you guys have the ability to do chat you have the ability to raise your hand. Okay, um, If you raise your hand and you have a question, please ask it. I like these, inter these uh, webinars to be somewhat interactive. So what will happen is when you do raise your hand, I will switch over and turn your audio on so that you can ask a question. Now, because I have it set up on my speakers, there may be a little bit of feedback during that, but I'll repeat question and then basically go towards answering it and then we can talk about it for a couple seconds and then move on. The intended webinar is, is, is intended to be an hour or less. So if we get done faster, then we're going to get done faster. Um, if I do my normal and I talk too much, we're going to run that whole time. So just kind of giving you guys the, the heads up. Um, also there's a chat down there. Um, I have someone who's helping with this and basically taking notes of the stuff that's coming through. So just in case you don't want to uh, talk on a webinar, you can actually send it in through chat and then what we'll do is we'll turn that person on and let them read through some of the questions and we can kind of discuss it a little bit more. So all that's out of the way. So now what we want to do is we want to basically start talking about your customers. Okay, If you're like any like any business out there today, every business seems to have issues with being able to provide stellar customer service. And that's one of the things that we run into all the time. We talk about it. Um, we have issues even in-house with taking care of our customers, and we talk about how we want to do those things. But let's go into to the next part of the, the webinar here. So your service custom, customers today are more demanding are you able to deliver? This is a question that I normally ask a lot of people and you get mixed reactions, but in an ever-changing technological market, you need to stay ahead, okay? Because business as usual is temporary. I mean, it really is. And what we find out is that, you know, a service company's, you know, customer, or excuse me, uh, service customers are becoming so much more demanding that it's really hard to keep up and doing things the old way with paperwork and other stuff like that tends to reduce the amount of customer service and it's some of the things that we've kind of noticed as we go through these things there's it creates basically longer lead times um, and inaccuracies in reporting and in some cases you know, these demanding customers in some cases are actually wanting you to fill out their paperwork in addition to your own. Um, I have a couple customers who I've worked with and they were telling me that, you know, and, and even from my history, that customers will basically come to you and say, okay, yes, you can service our equipment or do, do the work for us, but in order to do it, you have to fill out our paperwork. Well, in order for you to invoice it, you have to fill out your paperwork. So now you're doing two sets of paperwork, which is always fun to do. Don't we love customers that ask us to do those things? Okay, a modern example. Okay, your dispatcher or person who basically takes uh, the issues receives a call from the customer because they either know or versed on how and where to look for the information. Um, and, and these dispatchers are versed on how to know where to pull up the information. They know how to handle the customer. Okay, Once they've taken the call and opened it to a service order or dispatched it to the field, 
then we have to look at do the technicians know how to take care of it? Do your field service people, do your field people know how to handle this particular customer? So what we end up with is at times it takes a phone call, okay? Um, and there has to be an additional discussion. If it ends up being an email, someone has to create that email and send it out. Yes, you can use templates and other stuff like that and process them out real, real much faster. But if you have a thousand customers and your customers are all special handle customers, which today they're getting to be, um, then basically what happens is you have this really, really long list of templates that no one can really surf and get the right information out to. So it really uh, presents a bit of a problem. So before we go much further, who is Eric Dobbins? Okay, this, this is the guy talking to you on the webinar. All right, so first off, um, um, I've been in IT for over 35 years. Uh, that's kind of sucks. It tells everybody how old I am. Um, worked with everything from water-cooled banking systems. I don't know if you guys ever saw those, but they actually filled up an entire floor of one of the towers, um, Bank of America, um, some of the other uh, Wachovia, some of the older uh, systems that were purchased by First Union and then uh, purchased by Wells Fargo. We, I worked on a lot of those systems for them and insurance companies. Also worked on some of the first PCs. Okay, this is really dating me. Um, basically, when there were no real hard drives in those PCs, and they basically ran on what were called floppy disks, and those floppy disks were about this big, you know, square, and you inserted them into one, and you clipped it over, and then you turned around and inserted it into the other one, and you clipped it over, and you, one of them ran the program, and one of them saved the data. And if you made a mistake and saved it to the wrong one, you corrupted your program, and then they had to go get a new disk to create your program. It's really fun stuff back then. Um, okay, I digress. All right, so in, 19, in 1998, while I was working for Sara Lee, I wrote one of the first mobile applications. This was even before it was called mobile. Okay, they didn't really refer to applications as mobile, but they had devices that you could take around. They looked similar to what your, your iPhones or your Android phones are today, but they were basically just these much thicker devices that you carried around and you could collect data on it. Okay, and the application that I created, even back then, used what's called store and forward technology. Store and forward technology means that you don't have to be connected, and at that time, Wi-Fi was extremely expensive. Okay, nowadays you get it when you go get a cup of coffee. Okay, but back then, in order to get Wi-Fi, I had to write up a uh, capital expense request and ask for about $5,000 just to get one Wi-Fi unit. Okay, so this is how expensive those things were back then. Now you can get Wi-Fi by just buying a cup of coffee. So for $1.69, you can get Wi-Fi for a couple hours. Okay, after that, I went to work for one of the Caterpillar divisions, um, from which is the MCFA, which is Mitsubishi Caterpillar Forklift of America, where I wrote some other mobile applications for the service department. And these ones for the service department, we noticed a lot of things that were going on. And what happened is I wanted to listen to the guys who were talking. And that was one of the things that really, really helped out. Um, in 2014, I started our own company, okay, um, where we live the philosophy, simple, smart, flowing, and user intuitive applications. So we basically, these are the values or the core pieces that we put into every application that we build. Um, we believe that if you give a user more than you ask them to do, you will have a greater acceptance. And doing this, we've made our software one of the preferred softwares out on the field. Everyone who's looked at it, everyone who's talked about it, they all seem to say that's better than the other folks that, are, that we're dealing with. So in some cases, we've looked at unhooking other companies. In other cases, we sell them brand new. Um, we're not doing that right now today. So, All right, so myth, field service mobility, and this could be just field mobility, does not support customer demands. And that's an incorrect statement, okay? 
the one of the questions that we ran across is I, I saw an article in one of the newspapers. I can't remember where it was. Uh, it was talking about GE, and they asked the question, "Have you become a technology company?" And what they said basically is that doing things the old way really um, was not, you know, it was the way they were doing things for a long time. And then one day they woke up and they found that, oh my God, I've got to, ch we've got to change, we've got to keep up. So they became a technology company that manufactures product. So what oh. happened is they're really, really deep in uh, technology nowadays. And you can see it in their commercials and other stuff that they're doing. They're not just saying that they build something. They're talking about the technologies that they use to build that. And for most companies, if they're not doing this, this is something that they need to be looking into. So this is one of the reasons why we do what we do. Okay, now back to our subject. Is special handling a big headache? Well, special handling seemed to be invented around the time when Walmart really started pushing a lot of their vendors to do certain things to make sure that all of this stuff happened. Um, at the time I was working with Sara Lee and I heard all about handling Walmart and how if you filled out their paperwork, if you did things, every, everything their way, they put you at eye level on the shelf. If you didn't, you went down on the bottom or way up on the top where nobody could see or, or reach you. So in order for you to get that prime location, you had to follow the rules that they set forth. Now, Walmart probably set the precedence on most of this. They're very good at what they do. So now let's talk about it in, in, in a uh, service type uh, situation. So the, the, in order to do this right, how do we get the information from a specific customer out to the people who are going to be doing the work? Okay, um, how do we relay this information? How do we get it to the people who make the decisions in the field? Because believe it or not, those people who are working in the field are an extension of your company. And they're basically using um, something to, to help, make, help them make decisions and tell the customers the right thing. Um, and the question is, is, have you had customers request special handling? Meaning that I want you to make sure that you check in with this person when you get here, then I need you to collect a PO before you leave, and then um, you check out with this person, okay, and only this person can sign it because they're the only person who can do that. And um, we need this type of thing filled out and that type of thing filled out and all of those other pieces. That happens a lot. It happens a lot more than most people realize. Um, do you have a way to communicate this information to the field quickly and efficiently? And this is really where we kind of get into some of those questions. And, and those are the things that we really, really want to get dig into. Okay, and do your field technicians need to be reminded of the customer's special handling each time they visit the customer? The answer to that is yes. It, it, no matter what, if we sat down and we have five customers, then we can basically communicate that out that all these five customers are handled in these certain ways. But the moment that we step above a certain level, which most people can track anywhere from 10 to 200 items at one time, if we, if we try to ask to take care of those things and remember those other pieces, it basically gets dropped off the bottom. If they're not using it every day, they're not going to remember it. So those are the things that we want to make sure that we can do because you want it to pop up in front of the person every time they're there or be reminded in some way, shape, or form. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to stop for a second and I'm going to run a quick poll. Um, I have to put my glasses back on to see this, so I apologize for that, but can't see without it. So what we're going to do is we're going to do our first poll, and I'm going to let you guys answer. And then once you're done, then I'll show you the results, and we'll talk about it, and then we'll move on. So we're looking at uh, who is doing what and how they're doing things, um, and uh, some pieces along that line. So just I'll, I'll be quiet while you guys can type out your answers.
All right. So we're about to close the poll. We've got about 50% answered. And we're waiting for just a couple more to come through that are finished. I think we just have two more on question three, and then we'll be done. All right, and we are complete. So what we're going to do is I'm going to share the results. So everyone can see what we're looking at. It looks like we have some managers and some service deliverers here, which is great. Um, do you have trouble getting information out to the field? Some of you yes, some of you no. So that's really good. So we have some, some target audience here. And we've got the information back here. So we'll do that, and we'll cover this a little bit later. All right? Um, let me close the survey. Let's get back to our presentation. So the question that we were going into now is, are purchase orders a bottleneck? I mean, as long as I've been working in the industry, purchase orders is one of those things that no matter what you tell the, the warehouse manager or you tell the person who you're delivering the services to, no matter what you tell them, they do not want to fill out a PO. Okay, And this is something that's very common with almost all companies that I talk to. The trouble that you run into is you get a, comp a, a, a person in the field who basically says, and I quote, our company does not allow me to leave without a PO, which technically is not the truth. Okay, So you're providing the service. It's not your company who refuses to, to uh, to do this without the PO. It's actually the, their company. So what we need to do is we need to make sure we present that in a way that the, the person in the field knows that the person that they're talking to is the one who needs to get the PO. And it is their management that is asking for this. I heard time after time after time after time, our company won't let me do the work unless I get a PO. OK, that is not the case. Okay, and I always ask, you know, the question is getting a PO, do customers voluntarily give you a PO, or is it more like going to the dentist and having a tooth pulled? It's an undertaking. Okay, so you're going to have some time to sit there and do and work with that. Do you have some customers who refuse to pay if there's not a PO on the invoice? And I would say that the answer to that is yes, most companies do. They require a PO in order to pay. Okay. Also, do you have to send people back to get POs, and then or hide the labor in the office with the workers in the office actually going out and calling the people five to ten to twenty times to get that PO? Because each one of those things is costing your company money. Okay, and if you're not realizing that, it is. There's effort that's being spent. That, that, that that effort could be spent somewhere else. And those are some of the things that we really like to look at with the stuff that we do here. Okay. The snowball becomes an avalanche. So this is talking about technician meetings where you bring everybody in and you sit down and you talk to everyone about the changes that have been made. Okay. So what what, so what starts out to be an hour meeting ends up to be a two to four hour meeting. Does that sound strange? For the most part, most of you know exactly what I'm talking about. Because what happens is the folks who are coming in, they come in, they do their meeting, and then as soon as they're done, they realize, oh, I needed to talk to the dispatcher. Oh, I needed to talk. I need to go dump my parts. I need to go dump oil, I need to go pick up parts, I need to go talk to the guy in parts, because I haven't seen him in a long time, so let's go talk, go chat with him for a couple minutes. It'll only be a couple minutes. 
I refer to the office, when I was an over-the-road technician, I refer to the office as a black hole because time travels at a different speed at the office than it does when you're out in the field. Okay, When you're out in the field, time moves differently, but what happens is you're focused and you're actually getting things done. When you get into the office, there's so many distractions and so many things that go on that it makes it really hard for technicians and field people to get back out into the field because there are demands. People ask them for something. Someone for HR asks for something. Someone from this department asks them about an account somewhere, somewhere else. Two of the same type of people discuss issues that they're having with different customers. These things snowball like you wouldn't believe, and they really do. But if the information was provided to them without having to have some of those meetings, it would make a whole lot more sense. Also, you know, at any time, you know, these guys are, are going in, and, I, and when I was doing this, I used to try to pick off hours to go pick up my parts, primarily because I snuck in the back door I went and got my parts and I left. Okay, so one of the ways I became one of the most productive technicians around because I didn't go into the office and sadly enough have to deal with politics because that's what happens the moment they go in the office. They get called into somebody's office, have to discuss something that was happening, they have to go talk to somebody because if they don't talk to them and collect something then you know they're not doing what they're supposed to do. So that snowball actually happens and it's created sometimes by bureaucracy and sometimes it's created by the technicians. So even though we say we want to bring them all in but the, tech, the trucks have to leave at a certain time or the, the, the people have to leave at a certain time, that happens for the majority but there is a minority that gets stuck in this, oh don't worry about it, we got you covered. And those are the pieces that are costing your company money as well. So now let's talk about this as a case study with mobile. When the customer requirements are set up and put in an area where it will be updated on each customer service or, or each customer service request specific to that customer. Okay, what that means is we're going to take and put the information how to handle that customer in a certain spot. And then that customer is going to be able to, you're going to be able to see that when you go out and talk to that customer. They're going to tell you how to handle that customer and what to specifically do when you're there. So the next part is the customer calling in the, the breakdown or the issue or the request to someone who sends it out. It could even be the person that's talking to them. Once the service order is opened or the ticket is open, the dispatcher allocates it to the technician. The technician receives the order with the notices on how to handle the customer. Okay. Now we've just cut out a half hour of your toolbox meeting. Okay, now you can talk about the technical pieces that you really need to talk about. And you can move away from customer handling stuff. The special handling is set up so that the technician will not miss it or shouldn't. The technician is now has a much greater chance of handling the customer properly because they're in the it's right there in the order. Okay? This stuff really helps, and it really helps technicians be able to provide the service that they're looking for, that the customers are looking for. All right, another thing with field, field service mobility if, uh, effectiveness. If a warehouse manager does not want to issue a PO, the technician can even show them the instructions that dictate that he can't leave without a purchase order. Okay. I've had I've, I've heard of technicians actually showing them the piece on the screen that says their their company requires a PO in order for them to pay. So all of this stuff is much easier and then you know you've got all of that time that's being saved because they're now not having to call the office and say hey what do I do do I collect a PO do I stand here and not leave until I get one or do I move on what it, what it, what happens next? So instead of having to wait on it, now that stuff is handled right away. Now it doesn't have to go back into the office. If it goes into the office, someone in the system has to go through and follow up on that. And you guys know as well as I do, once that technician or that, uh, that field person leaves the site, it's less likely that you're going to get that purchase order 
quickly. Okay, and I'm not saying at all, but quickly. And what you're talking about with customer service is you want to also invoice quickly. And the reason for that is because if you invoice quickly, they remember what was done and they sign off on it faster. If you're sitting on this, this order to invoice it for two weeks or three weeks and then it comes in, that person who signed for it forgot that they did it. Now there's, there's a chance for a dispute. So this is one of the things that the, effective, the efficiencies really come through. Another field service mobility benefit. Wow. Let's say, for instance, you have a customer that, ha that says currently they have a, if it's a PM additional and it's under $500, just go ahead and do it. Okay. If it's a, you know, if it's anything else, it has to be signed by this person. It has to go through this process. But if it's under that amount, just do it. Okay. Now, the office gets a call or the person in charge of the customer gets a call and they negotiate 750 instead of 500 okay how do you get that out to your your people who are doing the work that they can actually go they can do work an additional $250 more than what they could before the only way to do that the best way to do it is to basically send it through mobile because then the next time they're there, it's going to pop up on the screen and tell them, hey, you know, if it's an additional, you got up to 750 before you have to get additional approval. So now what's happening is they're actually going through this much, much faster. Okay. The the dollar amounts that you're that you're invoicing is much higher with less hassle. All by making sure that the person who's doing the work can actually see what the pieces are. So if they're not doing this and you're not doing this, then you're basically costing the company about $250 in the, each one of these situations because they don't know that they can make that change. Now the office does and if you do it the other way that we were talking about, if they had the phone call, they'd say, okay, now remember at this customer you can go and add another $750. Just remember each minute that those people are on the phone call it costs you two minutes worth of work, okay? Because both of those people are talking to each other and they're taking away from something else they could be doing. If they're sending out emails, and don't we love emails? Emails go everywhere. The problem is, is how do you know that the person reads it when they're supposed to? The truth is you don't, okay? I mean, you can get read responses and all this other stuff, but what happens if they don't read it? All of a sudden now the time is wasted for the person who wrote the email as well as the person who was supposed to read it because they didn't read it and now they have to go back. So this makes it very, very easy to kind of do some of these things with it. All right. Um, so here's the, here's the wouldn't it be nice. So wouldn't it be nice to solve all these issues with one solution? Okay, imagine being able to see the customer's special handling and it pops up every time a technician looks at a service order, technician or field person. The way we approach this type of issue is to deliver the information at the time it's needed. And what happens with useless information? For the most part, if it's not useful to you right now, it gets stored back here in the back. Okay, and eventually it falls out the back. <laughs> So what you do is if the information is popped up right then, they don't have to remember these things. And basically we can get more things done because they're able to see these things. One of the big issues with toolbox meetings and emails to deliver this message to the technicians is that it is stale and forgotten after a few days or weeks. Okay, You can have a toolbox meeting today, tell the technicians one thing, two weeks later, they're going to do the total opposite because they forgot what you told them in that meeting. And it's not unusual. That happens to everybody. I mean, we, do, we have this thing, the same problem with people right down the hall in the office. This stuff happens everywhere, and it's not unusual. Okay. As mentioned earlier, we need to give more than we ask a user to do. So the question is, do you want to feel like a hero when, when you give this stuff to them? Because they're, they're dying to get some information that 
that they need. And this is just, we're just talking about the customer side of it, the customer service side of it. There's so much more that comes along with it. And those are the pieces that we really want to give to them that they basically do very little to get a whole lot. And that's what makes you know these type of applications really powerful. All right, so here's where we start talking about what we're going to do. And I've noticed I haven't seen any questions or anything, so it looks like everything's going pretty well. Um, let's check your course trajectory. Okay, as you saw in the very beginning, there's a space guy on the there's an astronaut on the screen, space guy, space monkey, something like that. Um, basically, what we do is we're looking at your course trajectory. Do you want to find out how you can wow your customers and empower your technicians and look like a hero? Okay, then we need to talk if you do. All right. Just one of many reasons we, we want to schedule this, but what we do is we do a review of what we call review a course correction or set up a course correction to verify that your mobile trajectory is on path. Okay. Now, we only schedule two of these meetings a week because our engineers are very busy developing new and exciting applications. So please don't delay. If you're really wanting to talk to us about it, please get in touch with us and make that happen. Okay, on the call, what we're going to do is we're going to collect the information that we need to review and with your field processes. Okay, we'll check it, we'll check your course trajectory, and then we'll see if you're on track or not, and then we'll make some suggestions to improve. And those suggestions to improve is suggestions to improve to deliver stellar service. Even if you already have a mo mobile field service solution, it's probably useful to do this. Okay, and I say that because you can potentially even take some of this stuff and ask them to do it for you. So what we're looking at is just basically getting the information to you so you can kind of make those decisions as to what you really want to do. Now, after that, after we that initial call and we get the information, we start compiling it. We will set a follow-up call that will share the findings of your of the course your own. At this point, we'll give you our recommendations for course corrections and get you on the trajectory or course for stellar service for now and in the future. So basically what we're doing is letting you know what needs to change. And that's all we're really doing with this. Now, you're un now I want to want to note this. You're under no obligation to purchase from us. Okay, this is a course review that you will have in written recommendations and to do with as you wish. So basically that doesn't sound too bad. Now let's go into the spoiler alert. Okay, the true confession. Okay, we're talking about a one hour mobile trajectory with a field engineer. We're going to click to make an appointment. We're going to talk about a course correction with a follow-up call to three to five working days later. We're going to click, we're going to make an appointment for that. Um, the what we're talking about this is a sales pitch, but it's a highly informative one, unlike the ones you've seen before. We're a young, average age, 31. I'm the one that skews it so much higher. Um, future thinking company who are using AI and machine learning to build stellar mobile field service applications as well as add-on and additional applications. We offer, we'll offer a follow-up, but you can say no and you still have it. Okay, so this is not a, you know, you do business with us or we don't give you the information. That's not the way this works. I want to make sure that I'm clear on this. We're going to give you the information. You can do with it what you like. By the end of the course correction, you should be able to determine where you are strong and where you need to focus. Those are the things that we need to talk, that you want to know. All right? You're under no obligation. As I said before, there's no obligation. Now, I do want to tell you, we are very selective with our customers. We are looking for forward-thinking service companies who want to improve and empower their technicians or field people in the best interest of their customers, okay? In the same way we want to improve and empower our customers. So we do the same thing and we want to make sure that if you're working with us that we want, they know that you want to work with us, we want to work with you just like you want to work with your customers, because, not just because they pay you, 
but because you want to work with them and they want to work with you for the same reasons. Um, some companies are not ready to launch mobile, okay, which is fine. And for, for those, this may not be for you. But for other companies who are ready and eager to lift off into a new future, we may be a resource for you. Okay, now I'm going to just basically talk just for a moment um, about that. That's the sales pitch. There's nothing else that's going on with that. The next piece I would have to say is how to connect with us. Um, if you're watching this, um, there will be links sent out. You'll be able to connect back up with us and ask for these uh, appointments. And then basically what we'll do is we'll go through and we'll set up everything for you and you'll be ready to go. Uh, the worst thing that you could get out of this, you have really nothing to lose. So the worst that comes out of this is you guys get uh, a trajectory correction and you move on. And there's no harm feel there's no hard feelings here. We're actually happy to do it because even if you use someone else's product, we want you to be the best at what you do. We want to make sure that you can do this better than anyone else. And if you're not doing it better than anyone else, someone else will be. And they will be taking your business. And that's what we look for. We look to make sure that we do it better than everyone else. We also want to make sure that you can do it better than everyone else. So to connect with us, um, you have um, some information. There'll be a follow-up email that basically puts the information out there that lets you know what the next steps are. If you would like to select the uh, make an appointment for the trajectory review, um, please do so now. All right, and we'll send the email out to follow up all of the other stuff as well. All right, again, my name is Eric Dobbins. I'm with Your Designs. We are a forward-thinking company and we're ready to help out and ready to be a resource for you. Thank you very much.